Um, all right, so let's switch to a guy that is getting healthy, been healthy, but had a setback in the spring. Michael Williams is ready to roll, and uh, you know his approach to the field and to the game this year, a lot of high expectations for him, but it sounds like he is locked in and, and he knows what those expectations are and he's ready to meet them. Jake? Man, I've I've got huge expectations for that kid this year. And I have that knowing, hey, Georgia fans, get ready for something, okay? I'm just going to go ahead and prepare you. Michael Williams might not be in the starting lineup very much this year, okay? Because – there's a guy out there named Tramel Wildflower, and staff loves him, and he is quietly one of the best run defenders in the country. Um, without you know, you don't even have to look it up. I mean, just watch him play. He snaps dudes' heads back. He he plays the run extremely well. They love the fact that he's 24 years old playing that five technique. But 13 is going to get more snaps than Tramel Wildflower, and 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 13 is going to be in there on passing downs and. You know, I had Barrett Salee uh, ask me about him today on XM Radio. And, you know, everybody's like, well, who's going to be the guy, right? Who's going to step in and kind of be that Jalen Carter, that disruptive force? I think 13's got a really good chance of doing it. And I'm telling you, man, when you, when you go out there at practice and you see him from 15, 20, 30 feet away, you're just like, that's a, that's a 1% of 1% person right there in terms of just the way he's put together. You know, a true six foot five, you know, 275 pound cat that, that just holds it and carries it well, moves well. Um, big season on tap for him, I'm afraid. Yeah, he, uh, he spoke earlier this week and said, I really feel like I've grown the most in my anticipation of plays, the way Coach Scott teaches us and develops us. You know what's going on before the ball is snapped. Uh, with me being out in the spring, I've just been sitting and watching and viewing different people. I can hear a call the O-line makes, and I know which way they're moving. It's like my anticipation of the game's gotten better. And that's the hurdle that all these elite players have. No matter how good you are, you come in as a freshman. Look at what uh, Roger Robinson's going through right now. Probably one of the most gifted running backs, talent-wise, in the conference. But he doesn't have the playbook down. And, and to hear Michael say, you know, in a weird way, being out, Help me reflect internally could have been a good thing for him in, in a in a strange turn of events there. I tell you a quick story on uh, Michael Williams. I'm a part of the Georgia Elite Classic uh, junior, freshman, sophomore All Star games, and by the time Michael was a junior, and I'm talking about after his junior season. This is when these these games are in December, and Michael probably had 40, 45 offers at the time, and he's a top thirty player in the country for everybody. And his dad sent me a message one day. He says, hey, Michael wants to play in that uh, junior all-star game. And I said, uh, Mr. Johnson, he, his dad's name, last name is Johnson. So, Mr. Johnson, he, uh, you don't, he doesn't need to play in this. He, he's good. He goes, no, no, no. He, he wants to play. And I said, I said, look, man, I, I don't want this kid to come up here and, number one, hurt kids. And, number two, I don't want him injured because he's got, you know, he's got what all these other kids are dreaming about. And he goes, look. He would love to come play. I said, well, listen, I'm not going to tell him not to. So he comes up here for three days in Rome. And he, number one, he worked the hardest of anybody. He was hustling. He was a great kid in the hotel, no issues. He was happy to be there. And we literally could not run a play when he was in the game on TV. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I remember texting the coach during the second quarter. I said, hey, man, can we, can we back his reps off a little bit? Uh, just so we can get the other team some reps on TV. And uh, to me, it said a lot. And this is one, this is the thing I'll never forget. After the game was over, we had a senior game. So those seniors are playing. And there's so much buzz about Mike Hill, what he just did on TV. And I was like, man, this kid's special, you know. And I look down on TV, and this kid is holding the chains in the next game. <laughs> he, I mean, he literally did not want to leave the field. I mean, he just loves it. And I was like, I hit the talk back in this truck during a commercial. I said, is Michael Williams down there holding the damn chains? And they're like, yeah. I was like, oh my God, man. I mean, like, so, you know, that kid is different. He's been a, he's been a, a really good kid to cover in high school. Obviously um, I've told the story before I shot his commitment and about three weeks later, he told me to hold it. So I'll hold, I held his commitment and then he, de then he committed to USC. He had a private, a silent commit to Georgia for about three weeks. He told me to hold it. Then he committed to USC, 
And I remember thinking, well, I'll never use that video. And then <laughs> about six months later, I was able to use that video. What was crazy though, at the time he had, he had his hair was longer when I shot the commitment. And by that time he had cut his hair down real, real tight. So I was like, I'm still going to run the video I've got. Yeah. Even though that was in March. So that was kind of my Michael Williams uh, story, but man, he is, uh, he is a really, really talented football player. And uh, he's one of those, those, you know, Jake and I talk about it a lot. He's one of those hard, uh, you know, body frames and types to find someone that can stand up and also play that five position with your hand down and stop the run. So, you know, Walthour will play a good bit, but I agree with Jake. At the end of the day, 13 is going to play more snaps. And when you start looking around that third and fourth quarter, 13 is going to be on the field as long as he's in shape. Rusty was pulling the Buffalo Wild Wings, just manipulating the junior game, telling y'all to calm uh, down. Hey, yeah, I was like, whew, that was that was uh that was a wild one there. But man, that and I and I knew that the kid that was blocking him and the kid that was blocking him went to I think he went to like West Georgia. And I know that kid probably tells everybody that story. Like I had oh, yeah. I had to block 13 on TV. So trust me, <laughs> I, I feel Ohio State's pain. And that game was yeah. Michael Williams is an all-star game headache in a lot of ways. I remember yes. the second, uh, the second um, elite, uh, not uh, the second uh, rising seniors, Carl Lawson, and oh. kind of the 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 show he put on. I mean, they couldn't practice, and and he kind of came into that a little bit as an unknown. Like I don't think anybody realized just how good he was, and he wasn't put together like your normal pass rusher. He's a little sawed off. He was. You know, compact. He was, you know, around six foot two. He ended up having, you know, a phenomenal career. But uh, um, he was one of those guys. Like you were, you were there to see Reuben Foster. You were there to see Trey Matthews or or whoever. And then here comes Carl Lawson. And you're like Jesus Christ. We're not gonna be able to practice because of this kid. <laughs> um, I, I just remember the coaches just shaking their head. And like, All right, get him out. Let's run some plays so we can, you know, so we can practice and do something. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tomahawk Dog wants to know, Rusty. I'm sure you have more than one of those videos that guys wearing different college colors than he actually ended up uh, playing for. But Tomahawk Dog wants to know any insight how USC changed Michael's mind for six months. I love recruiting stories. Um, well, his brother, you know, his brother, his half brother was out there too at the time, and now he's at Ole Miss. Michael Trigg was a tight end out there, and you know, at the at the time, it wasn't really that big of a here. Here was here was something that changed the entire game. You guys remember if you go back to that that March, you remember when the NCAA changed that rule in 2021, where they started letting them take those visits in June, and then you could take five visits. So uh, he was he was done with Georgia behind the scenes, and then about three weeks later, the NCAA came out with that rule. And I remember well, it wasn't just that, Rusty. It was COVID. They they opened, opened the doors. Yeah. They opened the door to let them go back on campus. Yeah. In June. So when they start letting them take those visits, the all these kids start decommitting. And and he really didn't have to decommit because he was, you know, he was uh, he was uh, a silent commit. So I remember him calling me that that uh that one night on like a Sunday night or something. He goes, Hey, I'm ready to commit. I go well, am I going to be able to use the video I got? He goes, no, I'm going to USC. I went, okay. Hmm. Uh, so we'll, we'll do, we'll do USC. I said, but you know, when are you going to do this? I'm, I can't get down there and get another video for a while. So, you know, he was like, no, I'm just going to run a story and gave me some quotes and we ran the, you know, the USC commitment, but I knew then um, that he, he was a, he was a major Georgia fan and uh, UGA stayed on him and stayed on him. And I think um, USC struggled. You know, let's see, they struggled, and that staff got let go um, pretty quickly. And then I think, you know, Dale McGee, a lot of credit to Dale McGee. That Trey Scott was involved, but Dale McGee was the lead recruiter there. So Dale McGee, Dale McGee back in Columbus uh, stayed on him and ultimately signed him and got him, got him in Athens. Yeah. USC could use him now, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they, well, they, tr- they tried hard, real yeah. hard. 